Number one. I never had a great childhood. My dad was gone all the time, and my mom was too. When she was home, it was normally verbal and physical abuse. I always needed a way to escape it, and whether it was playing video games, watching movies, or even drinking. One day, I was invited over to a friend's house for a sleepover. When I got there, he immediately told me he had something to show me. We went upstairs, and he showed me his laptop. He said that he'd got onto the deep web. We stayed up till late at night, browsing all the interesting things on it. He then showed me how to use it. I took some notes. The next day, I decided to try it out for myself. I downloaded the software and was good to go. When on the deep web, there's a page full of links in order to go to the sites. You keep clipping on, clicking on the new links that pop up. At first, it was very boring. Tons of dead websites or disgusting ones filled with videos of real people getting killed. Eventually, I found a forum. I can't remember what it was about, but I asked how to get anything that was interesting but not illegal. One guy sent me a link and said it was a site that contained leaked government documents. I thought that was interesting, so I clicked on it. When I pulled it up, a bunch of videos of people getting tortured, murdered, in the most horrible ways popped up. I have a pretty strong stomach, so I was ready to ignore it and just exit out. But I realized all the videos were playing at once. When I moved the mouse over one, there was no bar that let you pause it. That's when it hit me. All these videos were thousands of li live streams. I clicked on one that said, Homeless man kidnapped in my basement. In it, a man was tied to a chair. To his left was a table, and on it, a whole bunch of tools like axes, knives, drills, hammers. And there was a hooded man standing by it. On the right of the live stream, there's a chat box, and people were requesting various terrible things to do to the homeless man. Eventually, one man in the chat box said that he would pay several bitcoins for the hooded man to gouge out the homeless man's eyes. The hooded man agreed and grabbed what looked like a fork off the table and began to walk to the homeless man. I quickly closed the live stream, but I could still hear it. I tried to leave the site, but it was frozen, and I could only hear the horrible sounds coming from the stream. A few seconds later, the sound stopped a chat box appeared in the center of the screen. I couldn't exit, but then the box somebody typed, Hello, how'd you like this site? I paused for a moment, not sure if it was some kind of automated message, but then he typed again, Are you going to answer? I stayed frozen in place, but eventually typed, Who is this? Then the guy explained that he was the owner of the site, and they liked to greet first-time users whenever he could. I got a disgusted look on my face, and this is where things got really scary. In the chat box, the man typed, It's rude to make faces, Jake. My eyes got wide, and I noticed the webcam was on. I always keep it off. Also, how'd the man know my name? I covered up the webcam with a sticky note and typed, How'd you know my name? I'm calling the police. There was a brief pause, then horrifyingly, a whole bunch of data was posted in the box. I looked at it as I realized that it was everything about me. My full name, email address, age, it even had all of my parents' information as well. I panicked and shut off my computer and hoped that would be the end of that. I didn't want to go. I did a complete wipe of all my computer's data and went to get a drink. I was under a lot of stress. That night, my mom said she wouldn't be home. She said she didn't say where she was, but at this point in my life, I didn't care. My dad, of course, was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't sleep, so I stayed up watching a movie, and I fell asleep on the couch. I don't know why, but at about 2.30 in the morning, I woke up. The TV was still off, and a dim light was shining from it. But when I opened my eyes a little more, I almost screamed. There was a man standing just a few feet away from me with a mask on. I flew off the couch and darted to the door. I heard the heavy footsteps coming after me. 
I flung open the door and ran outside screaming as loud as I could, trying to get somebody's attention. I looked behind me and saw the man, he was running, and he was faster than me. I screamed louder and noticed I had tears running down my face. Then a bag got wrapped around my head and I was pushed to the ground with a lot of force. So much force that I felt blood in my mouth. I heard a car speed up beside me and I was being dragged to the sound of it. They were taking me away and I was probably going to be on that site. I had almost accepted my death when the man with the mask screamed in pain and dropped me. I pulled the bag off my head and saw the van speed away, and I saw my neighbor hitting the masked man with a baseball bat. The police had arrived. They took the masked man in, and it eventually caught the van, and then they shut down the site. My mom and I moved out, and I'll never ever go on the deep web again. And I encourage others to never go on it either. This story happened to my friend on the deep web. It was a pretty scary experience too, but mine was just a few years ago. This story happened to my friend just one week ago. For those who don't know, the deep web is pretty much an internet that isn't indexed by search engines like Yahoo, Google, Bing, etc. It can only be accessed by a special software such as Tor. To give you some context, this is my friend that he showed me how to get on the deep web. He has always been really fascinated with it, but after my horror story experience with deep web hackers, he pretty much took a long break. He didn't resume using the deep web until about a year after my story, but he didn't tell anyone. He would buy stolen Apple products, drugs, etc. About a week or two ago, he was buying some cocaine. It wasn't from the seller he normally buys from, though. But it was really cheap, so he gave the seller his address and a fake email he used so they could stay in contact until the deal was done. He wasn't too worried, this guy seemed professional, and it was the same procedure for most of his purchases. My friend told him to ship it in a movie case or something that his mom wouldn't expect to have drugs in. This was probably his biggest mistake. He let the man know he was just a teenager, but my friend isn't the most careful of people. A few days later, his mom walks in the house and hands my friend a movie that he ordered online. He took it and opened it up, but inside there wasn't any cocaine, just a folded up piece of paper. He opened it and it read, there has been a problem, email me for details. At the bottom, the, mon the man had left a new email for his friend to contact. My friend got his email and asked the guy what the problem was. He responded, something has happened, and if I were to send it to you, it would be traced back to me, and we would both be caught. Meet me at the elementary school at 7. We'll do it in person. The school wasn't too far away, so my friend told my mom he was staying the night at my house and he headed off to meet the man. He called me and asked if I could be there with him, but I was really busy with my schoolwork, so I said I couldn't. I did tell him to take a knife or something, though, just in case things did go wrong. When he got in the car in the parking lot outside, he heard a car honking its horn. He saw a jeep, but the plate had been covered up by duct tape, and the windows were tinted very dark. The man got out of his car and gave my friend the drugs, and my friend paid him. It seemed like everything went fine. My friend got in his car and sat there for a little bit in, in order to call and tell me everything went fine. He noticed when he hung up, the man was still there, though. Why was he waiting? He didn't think too much of it and drove off. When he got to the first red light, he noticed that the man's car was right behind him. He was starting to get a little nervous, but kept on driving. When he reached his neighborhood, the man was still following him, so he decided it'd be a bad idea to lead him to his house. He instead turned into the next neighborhood and took a whole bunch of random turns, hoping to lose the man. Eventually, he no longer saw the car, so he pulled his car into the garage and called it a day. That night, he noticed the sound of a car engine. He locked out of his driveway and saw the man's car. Parked in his driveway, he got wide-eyed and snuck downstairs and peered through the window. 
Inside the car, the man was smoking and talking on the phone. But in the passenger seat, he saw a second man. The second one looked a whole lot more suspicious looking, even more so than the shady drug dealer man. This second one had, had messed up hair, a trashy shirt, and while it was hard to see, my friend could almost make out a scar from a massive burn on the side of his neck on his face. He kept watching the two men until the second man began to look at the window more and more often. Eventually, he was just staring at the window. My friend was watching them from... My friend decided he would had enough and he was going to call the cops. He didn't care if he'd get in trouble at this point. He moved away from the window and called the police, who told him to grab a weapon or something to defend himself and wait for the police. He had waited about five minutes when he saw a figure quietly come out of his mom's room, who was still sleeping. The man shut the door behind him and noticed his friend had seen him. The figure sprinted towards my friend with what looked like the knife raised in his hand. My friend grabbed a pot from nearby table and he threw it at the figure. It hit him in the face and shattered. The figure screamed and fell to the floor. My friend turned on the lights and saw the second man with the burn rolling on the floor. His face was covered in blood and shards of glass were sticking out. His bright eye had tons of blood pouring out. He must have been hit pretty hard as the man began to slowly get up. My friend grabbed a kitchen knife and drove it into the man's shoulder. Another scream could be heard from the man. The man began to stumble over to the front door where police sirens could be heard. Both men were caught on sight, but my friend's mom had been killed. Her throat had been slit and she had 23 stab wounds and duct tape covering her mouth. My friend was arrested too for drug possession. His trial was coming up, but he lost his mom because of it, so I don't think he'll ever buy drugs from the deep web again.